Hi, baby girl. Hi, Tulip. You feeling better today? I hope that you do. So, Tulip is sick. Um, she is not feeling good, and it's been a tough couple of days with her, to be honest. She's had a lot of pain and bloody diarrhea, and she's just not happy. We took her to the vet yesterday, and we're doing everything we can to get her to feel better, but it's absolutely heart-wrenching, and I just hope she gets better. Anyway, the show must go on. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about four signs that you might be heading toward overtraining as an athlete. This is a hugely important topic, especially right now in ultra running in particular, but in all endurance sports. The topic of overtraining is super hot. It seems that the more people that enter into the sport of ultra marathon, and of course in other endurance sports as well, the more people end up suffering from overtraining. Some people like to call it burnout, some people call it you know, adrenal burnout or whatever your terminology is. What we're talking about is a situation where the body cannot compensate for the continual increases of training load over time. And as always, I typically say, it's not about your legs and your lungs. That is not what's going to support you as an endurance athlete or an ultra runner in my case. What is going to support you the most is your endocrine system. So when your endocrine system starts getting tapped out because it is producing too much cortisol or stress hormone, because you are now training at a level where your body cannot recover, you are going to end up in a world of you know what. There's lots of things that happen to the body as cortisol level starts to go up, and the symptoms that come from that are what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna to talk about four symptoms that show that you might be heading toward overtraining. There are ones that you may have heard of before, but chances are you might not, um, might not have. The first sign that you might be heading toward overtraining is actually something that came up uh, maybe about uh, a week or two ago on Instagram. And one of my favorite ultra runners, Magdalena Boulay, had a blood panel and a whole bunch of um, uh, blood work done to find out how her overall health was and how she could relate that to her training and nutrition needs. Well, it turns out that she was actually shocked to find out that her vitamin D levels were quite low, despite the fact that living in California and training outside all the time, she's always in the sun, and sun is where we get most of our vitamin D. So she was actually shocked to see that her vitamin D levels were low. By the way, as a side note, um, watching Billy Yang's Life in a Day video of Magdalena Boulay is what inspired me to make a little purchase of these booties. Oh my god, that's so stalkery. <laughs> Sorry Magda if you're watching this, but I loved your shoes, I had to have them. So how does this happen and what does this have to do with overtraining? Okay, well, vitamin D synthesis relies on cholesterol. So the light that we get from the sun, to convert it into vitamin D in the human body, we need cholesterol for that process. You know what else is made from cholesterol? Stress hormones, specifically cortisol. So when you find that your vitamin D levels are low, despite the fact that you're spending a lot of time outside and you're an endurance athlete, chances are that the cholesterol you have in your body is being utilized for cortisol production and not for the synthesis of vitamin D. There's simply not enough left over for the vitamin D production. So if you do have blood work and you're an endurance athlete and you notice that your vitamin D level is low, that might give you something to think about. Number two was actually something that I experienced myself, and I've been waiting for the right time to tell you about it, and I think this is it. The second thing that might let you know that you are headed toward overtraining is you're getting really heavy periods and really bad cramps and or PMS. Cortisol depletes progesterone production. So when you have less progesterone, you actually have more estrogen. You end up estrogen dominant. For a female, this can mean a lot of different symptoms are gonna start happening. It means you can have very painful periods, very heavy bleeding, very sore breasts, really, really bad PMS, and yes, fat gain. So now most of you know my history, but I did get my period back almost a year ago at this point. And in December, I decided to train for and race in a 50K. I have to tell you that during the time of training for and then subsequently racing that 50K, I had the worst, worst cramps, PMS, pain, breast pain, and also menstrual cramps that I have ever had in my life. And since I was sort of in a precarious point, in my opinion, of recovery from amenorrhea, I started to try to understand why I was experiencing really bad symptoms. It seems that at that point, I was starting to go toward estrogen dominance. I was not making enough progesterone because cortisol was pumping out again. And so I was getting this really painful symptoms. In my personal experience, this was definitely a warning sign to me to 
back off the running again. Number three is that you are probably gonna notice some massive blood sugar issues. This will typically manifest itself in two different ways. First of all, let me tell you about why this is true. You are running a ton. Your cortisol level is high because your body is under stress. Your body thinks that it's running away from lions and tigers, so it thinks that it needs lots of glucose. Cortisol provides the body with all that glucose. Of course, if the cortisol stays elevated and the glucose is pumping out, you're eventually gonna deplete that energy source. So what happens? You get irritable, you get sweaty, you get feeling like you're gonna faint or lightheaded, and you need to eat right away. You know that t-shirt that says, I'm sorry for what I said when I was hungry? Yeah, I could've worn that t-shirt every day of my life and it still wouldn't have been an excuse for why I was such an epic mega bitch when I would get these blood sugar drops in the middle of the day. Now the fun part of this, manifestation number two, how this shows up in your life, so you're not just a mega bitch because you need a snack, but at night you wake up. This was the worst for me too, in my personal experience, because I would wake up in the middle of the night with this like aching hunger to the pit of my soul. I'd be sweating, I just didn't know what to do. I would have to get up and have a snack. I mean, that was obvious, but it disrupted my sleep so much. So if you find that you're having blood sugar swings during the day that are really making it hard for you to concentrate, making it hard for you to remember things, making it hard for you to be a nice person, cortisol is probably to blame and you might be heading toward overtraining. Okay, number four is a little more serious and I want to talk about this because it's it really shocked me when it was happening and I don't know if I really thought it was serious until I started to pay attention to my thought process. When you're heading toward overtraining, the mental burnout is real. I am going to admit this to you, and this is a little bit hard for me because it's not something I even wanted to admit to myself, but there were several times toward the end of my training for my last 50 miler, which was now almost a year and a half ago, where I can't believe I'm even gonna say this. I would be running down the trail so exhausted that in a way, I wished for an injury. I wished for something to stop me because on some deep level, somewhere in my heart and somewhere in my mind, I knew that my body needed a rest. I knew that my mind needed a rest. And it seems like the weirdest thing in the world. It's, I don't even, this is hard for me. <laughs> I wanted something to stop me because I didn't think I had the power to stop myself. And eventually, thank God, my logic prevailed and I was able to stop myself and I was able to go down this journey of ramping down my running and taking care of my body, taking care of my mind and eventually getting myself back to health. But there were moments in there where I felt this real sense of hopelessness and real sense of, I don't know, what is the opposite of joy? <laughs> That's what I felt like. Okay, second time for me to be brave during this video. The last thing I wanna to talk to you about is kind of keeping you up to speed with what's happening with YouTube. So I've been on YouTube for about six months and even though I don't have a lot of followers, I do put a lot of effort into this. I really enjoy communicating with you in this way and the positive feedback I've gotten is unbelievable. Honestly, it's the most beautiful thing. I'm not gonna stop making videos, but the fact is, is that making videos and corresponding with each and every one of you on email takes a lot of my time. YouTube has had some kind of crisis with advertising dollars over the last month or so, and they have demonetized every one of my videos, but for, I think, maybe four. Now, I wasn't really making money on YouTube before this point, but their new rules ensure that I won't ever make any money from these videos. This kind of sucks. I wasn't doing this for the money, but I have to pay my rent and I have to, you know, afford to live. I hate doing this. I don't want to be one of those people, but I am just gonna tell you that I do have a page on my website, acaseofthegills.com, where you can go if you feel compelled to maybe donate a few dollars. Everyone keeps telling me that I should just open up to you and tell you about the donate button. It's been there for probably a month. I just haven't talked about it at all because it's just so far out of my comfort zone. If you feel that the information that you've watched here on A Case of the Jills, if you feel that it's been valuable to you, if you have gained any type of insight or you really just liked watching the videos, I would so appreciate it if you would go over to acaseofthegills.com and do a quick PayPal donation. 
Okay, that's that's my quota of, of awkwardness for this video. I hope that this video was helpful to you today, and if you have questions or comments, please leave them below. Please like and subscribe this video, share it with your fellow endurance athlete friends that you think might benefit from it. Go ahead over to acaseofthegills.com to read the emails of the week and all the other good stuff. There's also a Facebook page, I think there's three flies and a mosquito on there, but go check it out. You can follow me on Instagram as well. Thanks so much for watching today. See you soon. Thank you.